My guest today is Scott Leonard. Scott is one of the members of Rockapella, and Rockapella will be joining the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra on Tuesday, July 19th at 7 o'clock at the Great Lakes Center for the Arts. They'll be rocking with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra Pops. Libor Andras is the music director. And again, Rockapella will be the special guest. And Scott, thanks so much for joining me today. I believe you are walking around downtown New York City. I am walking around New York City. I'm not downtown, but I'm on the Upper West Side, 105th Street in Amsterdam. Just walking the dog, enjoying the lovely weather. Because, you know, I, much like in Michigan, when you have good days, of good weather days, you've earned it, so you want to enjoy it. <laughs> yes, we have to take them when we can get them. Oh, man, I bet. Yeah, I bet. It's, well, I, know, I grew up in Indiana, so I'm aware that Michigan's that much colder. Yes, yes. Scott, <laughs> I must confess that when I learned that I was going to talk to you and that you were coming to Michigan to the Great Lakes Center for the Arts, I broke into song. I bet I know what song you broke into. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I, th I, th I was going to guess that first. Our other greatest hit being the best part of waking up is Folgers in Your Cup. But those are our two greatest hits, so I, I like the one you chose. Yes, yes. Well, you've been around for a long time. Rockapella has been around since, what, 1986? Yeah, even be that's before. That's just in the college kind of germ days of, of Rockapella. Uh, the, the TV show started in 91 with me. I started in 91, so I'm the last guy left from the early days of Carmen San Diego. So we're still hanging in there. Yeah, and I bet many of our listeners remember Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Just a terrific show on PBS that uh, had geography and culture and music and high energy and diversity, and it was a terrific program. It was really well done. The, the, the further we get from it as years go by, the more we realize what a kind of unique and great program it was. And, and it was aimed at kids, but we had a the demographic across the spectrum, I think. And those kids now are the age that the parents were when they were watching the show. So we've grown up with our fan base. Yes, and on that program, there were four singers, and now there are five of you, correct? That's right. The first, the last season, we had, we had, you know, we started as four guys, and then we added a vocal percussionist, the guy with the beat box. That, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that guy. So he was on the last season, though he actually was on the last season of Carmen San Diego. But yeah, we started out as four and then we became five and we're still five to this day. Well, again, you've been together for so long and really have had uh, a lot of success all over the world, not only in concert, but with commercials and all sorts of things. What has been the secret to your longevity? Refusing to shut up. That was, uh, that's <laughs> our secret. Now, we, um, you know, we were the first kind of contemporary a cappella group to kind of break through to them on a mainstream level. So there was a certain amount of notoriety with that. Plus, at the time, we had a record deal in Japan. We we're starting at the same time because I, I had worked in Japan a lot. And so we had this kind of simultaneous recording career going while in America. We had this sort of TV career. So the two of them kind of have melded down that we have kind of a global music career with you know, the visual stuff as well. So, and it's over the years, as guys have retired, moved on, we've been able to kind of hand pick the perfect replacement. So at this point, it's, it's a, it's a fine tuned machine really making music like it hasn't ever before. Well, yeah, and as you mentioned, there are many a cappella groups out there, but you have that unique sound. What gives you that unique sound? Is it a vocal quality, or is it your arrangements, or what gives you that unique a cappella high-energy sound? I think it starts with the arrangements, you know, kind of a unique way to approach stuff. When we do a song that people know, I don't want to do it just to, because they know the song. You want to make it a cappella, and it's the combination of the it's an approach with bass and drums and melody, but then you've got the two other guys that kind of fill in backups that are unusual, not just a ooh-la-la, shooby doo kind of typical back-up chorus kind of stuff, where ours is a lot of counterpoint, a lot of words that don't get in the way of the melody and the message, but kind of enhance it to make this kind of contrapuntal sort of a cappella sound. And gosh, when we started, we were the only ones doing it. And now when you go around the world, every, every university has multiple a cappella groups so it, it as, a, as an art form it's been fun to watch it really explode over the years to where it's really common now do you do many of the arrangements yourself 
Yeah, I do them all. I do them all. In the early days, it was Sean and I. Sean was the guy with the braids, the tall guy, and he was the founder of the group. And then it, he and I did the arrangements, and now he moved on. So we, we, we work with him a lot, but I do all the Rockapella stuff now. Wow. How do you decide what to do and what songs to do? That's a good question. Um, well, you know, we have always emphasized original music, which is unusual for acapella because mostly it's people doing acapella covers of popular songs. So we, we, have, we do that as well, but we first and foremost always emphasize the original songs, and so that makes us unique. But then as far as other stuff, at this point, we have, we have a whole holiday tour we do, which I really enjoy. So those are obvious. We keep adding to that kind of repertoire. But um, I, it's fun because when you apply the kind of distinctive rock cappella sound to different genre, it all still sounds like rock cappella, but it makes for a very entertaining and kind of varied evening for, of a concert if you come see rock cappella. Uh, anything from the Mills Brothers in the 40s to the Beatles to disco to Bruno Mars to whatever. I kind of shied away for a while from doing the popular new stuff because that was kind of a trend of everybody doing really new chart-topping songs. But we've caved in and we do that some now, too. There's a lot of, if you go to rockefeller.com, you can see a lot of videos we do of kind of mashups of popular songs. With, I like to throw in old stuff because I'm a, an old guy and love old, like I said, Mills Brothers, Andy Williams, uh, all the kind of vocal groups, the Beach Boys through the years. It's, so there's just such a wide arrangement of stuff to pick from. It's a lot of fun to have a kind of a signature sound to apply to it. Yes, and a good song is a good song. That's a good point, yeah. Well, you know, I, I just did a whole, during the pandemic, I made a whole Beatles show uh, of Rockefeller approach to Beatles stuff, and I tell you what, you'd have to try pretty hard to mess those songs up. <laughs> really, they're a delight to work with. So on... Tuesday, July 19th, Rockapella will join forces with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra at the Great Lakes Center for the Arts. Obviously, you will be not a cappella when you're joining forces. What can folks expect from that concert? Those are so fun for us because 90 plus percent of our concerts are a cappella, just us. So when we get to sing with an orchestra, we, our, we first, you know, we always kind of took a pledge like, we will never sing with instruments. We do not need the crutch of the instrument. We, we refuse. So when the Boston Pops first called us and said, would you like to come sing with us? We said, yes, we would, of course. So we, we didn't hold out very long. But it's so fun because usually it's us having to stay in tune, having to really listening. It it's all depends on us. But when you sing with an orchestra, that's, it's kind of like singing to the radio. It's just so much, so liberating and like so easy to just kind of have fun with it. And the sound is is remarkable. I tell you to have that kind of rock cappella has a full sound, but then when you put the, the the orchestra with it, and and just it was so fun to be able to kind of make the arrangements to have this other these other elements to play with because I'm always using just the five elements of mm -hmm. the four voices and then the, the vocal drums. So when you get to add all those colors of an orchestra with the percussion and the horns and the strings, it's it's liberating. And we we do some clever stuff with we. We we made a joke because we said, okay, because a lot of the first step was like they would take a rock cappella arrangement that existed and then the, the orchestrators of the Boston Pops would add on to it. So it, would, it already existed as a rock cappella arrangement. And then we decided we got to do something where we create something with both entities in mind from the start. So we was like, well, we have to, we have to do something very heady and, and significant. So I say, well, we went straight to the catalog of Sonny and Cher. So we do <laughs> The Beat Goes On, which is kind of a percussion battle between us and the percussion section. It features that. It's a lot of fun. And what other songs? Oh, there's some songs I love. When I grew up in the 70s, for the uh, 4th of July Boston Pops special that happens every year, we were there one year and did Philadelphia Freedom from the 70s, that Elton John song. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so that's a, I love that one. We'll do that. We'll do that when we're in Michigan. We do Beatles stuff. We hear comes the sun. Uh, we do like Shambhala, uh, Dance with Me, '70s stuff. We do an original song with the, with the uh, orchestra as well, and they they they'll do th some stuff by themselves, and we'll do some stuff by ourselves as well. So you'll get a, a variety show with a lot of different flavors. 
That sounds like so much fun. And Rockapella is not a group that just stands behind the microphone. <laughs> you guys move around quite a bit. We do. Yeah, in the early days we were pretty stationary, a little step touch, a, little, a lot of shtick. We have moved on to kind of a new temptation divide. There's a lot of choreography, a lot of staging. So that adds to the uh, entertainment value, I'd say. So, yeah, you'll, you'll get a full... Uh, you get the full flavor when you come to Michigan on the next Tuesday. Scott, how do you and Rockapella want folks to feel when they leave the auditorium on Tuesday, July 19th? Oh, gosh, uplifted and just having had a nice time, you know, especially after the, we had we had a year and a half plus of no live music at all, no live Rockapella concerts. So it has been like withdrawal. So now getting back in front of audiences and I think audiences getting back to, to realize what they had forgotten has been a real revelation so it's it's all good right now as you know there's nothing like a live performance for the performers or for the audience yeah absolutely so it's a a unique experience especially with the acapella stuff because there's nothing between you and them it's very simple to see how the sound is created although people are shocked at the the sounds that our vocal percussionist jeff thatcher makes it's i remember when we first started using vocal percussion one time at a concert somebody came to me after the show and said, I loved your show, but it's too bad that you had to use the drum machine to, to accompany you. I'm like, what drum machine? She's like, oh, you had a drum machine playing with you. I said, no, that was all one guy. She said, oh, well, maybe you didn't realize that there was a drum machine playing along with you. <laughs> thing. I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe I did. <laughs> so it is hard. To, it is remarkable. That is kind of the, the novelty item of our... We used to... Rockapella in itself used to be the kind of novelty act, but now... The only novel part is this the vocal percussion, which is uh, remarkable to people when they see it for the first time. It is pretty cool to see a vocal percussionist. And he's hear. amazing. I tell you, 25 years he's been doing this with us, and the, the power and the consistency, I'm like, I can't believe his head just hasn't, or his lips haven't, like, popped off. It just, it's remarkable <laughs> to have the, the power and the consistency of that guy. Well, we will look forward to Tuesday, July 19th at the Great Lakes Center for the Arts, rocking with the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra Pops, the Great Lakes Chamber Orchestra under the direction of Libor Andras, the special guest, Rockapella, Scott Leonard, my guest today from Rockapella. We talked about where in the world is Carmen San Diego. It was a show on public television. And I'm going to take a leap here and assume that Maybe there's a special place in your heart for public broadcasting? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. QED in Pittsburgh and, and EDU in Boston, they produced the Carmen San Diego show and really gave us our start and has, have supplied us with the basis of a career, I tell you. And we did a concert, a live concert on PBS years ago and, and toured supporting that. So PBS has always been a great supporter of Rockefeller and been a great supply of wonderful entertainment. I've always loved it. Scott Leonard from Rockapella coming to the Great Lakes Center for the Arts on Tuesday, July 19th. Thank you so much for taking time with me. This was a lot of fun. It was. Thank you for having me. It was very enjoyable.